Welcome to the Circuit Rider Bible Study with Andy Brink. Look with me. I'm trying to think of where to go. Because Jer- I'm heading somewhere. But Jeremiah chapter 6. And keep in mind as we, as you read in the Old Testament, when it speaks of Israel, it's speaking of the people of God. Just and, and, and even back then, this, this might surprise some of you, and I'll have to find the passage in the New Testament, maybe in Hebrews, but I'm not sure. But he says, when they spoke, they were not even speaking at that time. They were speaking for generations to come. They were speaking to us. Because God knew that, that, that those were, they were a picture of a people that would come, this new covenant that would come. And he says, uh, so when he speaks of Israel, starting in verse 10, To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ears are closed and they cannot listen. Behold, the word of the Lord has become a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. He says, who can I speak to and give warning? Who will listen to me? But he says, they won't listen. They won't take heed. And the word of the Lord has become a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. Now, aren't you grateful that that doesn't represent any of us? But think about this. And again... I'm just going to tell you, I'm not speaking to anybody here. I'm talking about the own, my own temptations and sometimes the, the pressing that I feel upon myself to stay true to the Word in this world. Sometimes it's not going to feel or sound comfortable. It's going to make you uncomfortable. You know, this Word, and again, now listen, I believe I've set enough of a foundation here with everybody here. I talk about every sin. But when you speak about the word homosexuality, aren't you grateful that we're smarter than God? Listen, back then they didn't really understand that it was genetic. They didn't realize that it was a gene inside of you. I mean, that's kind of uh, archaic back there to say what God said. We have no delight in it. We don't take it seriously. We kind of think we've got a better way. And we even justify it within the church. How could, how could a loving God actually have judgment in hell? That doesn't make sense. So we begin to create a God in our own image. And I'm not talking about outside the church. I'm talking about inside the church where what we're saying has nothing to do with this. And it's getting to a place where you almost feel uncomfortable to share this. Because it doesn't fit in. It doesn't necessarily go with... And again, I'm not talking about the flow of this world. I'm talking about the flow of the church. And you know what? We're not going to like this. But Jesus said in the last days, He said, men are going to hate you. Why? Because you're saying something different. How many of us in this room want to be hated? (laughs) You know, none of us want to be hated. God created us to want fellowship. We want to be liked. But he's already said, and I I like two things. One, Sean said, and I I said this earlier in the the apartments, I like the wording he used. He says... um, I have an inside inside information. Inside information. You know what that's like? It's like a, you know, now you hear about this on the news where some politician who's on a certain board and he's got understanding about companies, there's insider trading where they've got insider information and they take that information and say, listen, sell everything. This thing went, sell it now before it comes out on the public. They've got information other people don't have. God says, I've got inside information for you. I've got right here the opportunity to open things up to you. And the rest of the world doesn't see. 
For instance, and this was something Clayton was saying, as I was talking to him, we were talking about the hurricanes and stuff, and he said, he said, you know he's already talked about it right here. You know God's already said this thing's coming to an end. He's got inside information. Because if you listen to the news, they don't have that same information. And so they're, they're, they're turmoil. There's fear. What's happening? You know, it's, it's Trump's fault that, the, that the, you know, the, the environment is this. Or it's Obama's fault that this is happening. God said, listen, I've told you already, this is what's going to happen. And one of the things he's already told you, you are going to be hated for my name's sake. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm always, often at least, examining myself by that. Because I'll tell you right now, I have the temptation to kind of figure out how to say it. And, and listen, there's another pastor that says, wisdom makes knowledge acceptable. Sometimes you can take somebody and just beat them up with it. But sometimes you can so water it down by trying not to hurt somebody's feeling that you don't actually say anything at all. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, that's probably sometimes where I end up falling sometimes, is I'll try to be so careful in the way I say it, they're not even sure what I just said. And that's not good. Because what it is, it's a lust and a need for the approval of people. And I'm going to tell you this right now. My word will not stand the test of time. My words and my opinions will not hold anybody when the storms blow the boat. But let me tell you what will. His Word. His Word is what, it's the one thing that's going to keep you. It's going to hold you. Now as we get into some of these passages, let me ask you this one question before we move on. If you knew if you knew that all eternity was in the balance, now think about what that means. This life right now is a vapor. I mean, we're moving through it quicker, and the older you get, the faster it gets. It really is. It's the truth. You know, when you start off as a kid, summer vacation feels like a whole year. The older you get, it just goes faster and faster and faster and faster. You're getting toward that end part. If you knew this thing's coming to an end and eternity is in the balance, would you be interested to know what God says? But I'm telling you, there's a war in your life personally to keep you from the Word of God. I was talking to a friend a couple days ago over lunch, and, and he just said, you know, I'm just... I'm really kind of distant from God. I'm just disappointed about some things. And I just, and I said, okay. And we just talked through and I said, listen, I've been through some of those places. And, I, and for me personally, when I'm going through things, I've got to keep things simple. If they get too big, I get overwhelmed by it and I just drift out of the way. But I told him about two things that are simple for me. I started one four months ago. I told you this every week. I write three things down every day that I'm thankful for. Every single day. But I said, the other thing I've been doing since I was probably 13 years old, I have committed every day to read one verse of Scripture. Not a chapter, not three chapters. I've committed to read one verse a day. Now, there have been days where I didn't read a verse. But that's what I've set my heart to do. And I'll tell you, as I've walked through places when I feel like I don't feel God, when I've walked through places where I found my heart saying, God, I don't see you, I don't feel your presence. As I look back, there are certain things that have kept me. And one of those things is the reading of Scripture. Because he says, listen, we'll see it later, but he says, his word is tried. It's been, tried, it's been tried again and again. And it has never left those who put their confidence in Him disappointed. Every word of God is true. Look with me in Luke chapter 5. Now 
Now there's certain passages I share often, but I don't always read them. I just feel like they're part of our Christian culture. And you'll know this one in Romans chapter 10, but it's where it says, Blessed are the feet of those who bring good news from a far country. And it says, uh, it goes on to say, um, Faith, in that same chapter 10 of Romans, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the the Word of God. Now, our natural understanding of that, because, now listen, it's a, it's a, this is a very good example of what has been told to us. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And, and you'll hear things just, you know, I'll just walk around confessing this or saying that. And, and if you'll just sit under the Word, faith will be, you know, rise in your heart. And, and if you'll just listen to it on this, or you'll do this. But it actually goes on to say even more than that. Because the very next verse it says, But haven't they all heard? Yes, indeed. Speaking about those who came out of, it, out of Egypt. They heard the, rock, the word. In Corinthians it says they ate spiritual manna. They drank from a spiritual rock. Not just the physical water and the physical manna. God was there with them to teach them, to speak to them. But it says this, it says, It never moved them to obey God. It never moved them to agree with Him. And I'm going to tell you, to confess Jesus is more than confessing His name. To confess Jesus is to say the same thing He says. Now let me ask you this, do we say the same thing He says? Or do we say, you know what? Listen, you can find right now, you can go to a Christian bookstore, and you can find a Christian book that will tell you whatever you want. Do you want to get divorced? There's a Christian book that will help you figure out how to excuse and feel good about yourself. Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? To confess Christ is to say the same thing He says. You have to forgive. I'm sorry. You're going to have to forgive. Adultery is wrong. (coughs) And we'll come up with a hundred reasons of why it's okay. Until you get to this word and you start reading red letters. I was sitting with a man, this was years and years ago, and he was teaching Sunday school at a church and and, uh, going through some struggles and we got to talking and he had been through divorce, he had several... You know, girlfriends, and he'd been sleeping with all of them, and we just got to talking about that, and I'm listening to that, and that, 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 that thing came upon me. All right, and I figured out how to say this nicely, and there's just some things, there's just no way to say it nicely. And I just went to a couple of passages that said, Those who do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And see, so, yeah, but I've prayed, and I had my confession when I was this, and I was back. I don't know. To me, he's talking to the church and he says, those who practice these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And we had several, we just went, and we didn't, it wasn't any argument, we just kept saying, uh, I, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm just telling you, that's what it says to me. And then, it don't be deceived. And that's what we were at. Well, then we were walking out to our cars after this coffee and he was going his way and I was going my way and and I said, well, uh, I, I just happened to turn and said, well, where are you heading? And he looks down and he says, you've really messed things up. And I said, what do you mean by that? And we kind of came back together in the parking lot and he said, I know where I'm going. I'm going to my girlfriend's. And I know once I get there, we're going to sleep together. And he said, and, and now you bothered me with these scriptures. That's what he said. And this was somebody that teaches Sunday school. And I said, well, you should be bothered. I said, you should be. Because those are very strong passages we read. And there's no way you should feel comfortable. And who said it? The Word of God. Jesus Christ said it. Amen. 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 <coughs> and so the, yes. And so the, the, the point that I'm making is, listen, you're going to have to spend time on the Word of God in these days to come. And we're going to see in a moment where he says, listen, many will come in my name and many will be deceived. And I want you to know this. You, when you were born again, were given the Holy Spirit 
Jesus said, listen, I am going that I might send to you this comforter. And He will lead you into all truth. And I want you to know this Bible is not chained to a pulpit. Jesus stood amongst those who were the doctorates of His time and He said, you have missed the day of your visitation. Because here I am standing in your midst and you won't receive me. You search the Word because you think that in that you have eternal life and you don't even see that this Word is pointing you to me. Amen. You're completely blinded by your traditions. Amen. Look with me in um, Luke chapter 5, verse 1. Now it came about that while the multitudes were pressing in around Him and listening to the Word of God, He was standing by the lake of Gisinaret, And he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. So as we get to this point, Jesus is teaching. And listen, he, as a matter of fact, the Scripture says he was nothing to look upon. It wasn't like he was head and shoulders above everybody else and had this great physique and and beautiful hair and and big broad shoulders and everybody just wondering, what is It says there was nothing about him to look upon. But there was something in his words that had authority to it. When he was speaking, something was speaking to the hearts of people. And so it says they were gathering, they were the multitudes as they were they were beginning to step on one another to be able to hear what he was saying. And so Jesus saw these two boats and these men working on their nets because they had been fishing all night. Verse 3, And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little way from the land. And he sat down and began to teach the multitudes from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing. But at your bidding, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish, and their nets began to break. And then it says other fishermen came to help, and Peter said, I'm a sinner. But as we look at that, Jesus gets into this boat, and he begins to speak. He sits in this boat a little from the land. He begins to speak to the multitudes. And I'm guessing Peter's in this boat with him, because he pushed out from the sand. And so Peter also is hearing the Word of God. And I'm going to tell you one thing. The Word of God, it's not just a mile marker to mark parts of your life. It's an intersection. It's going to bring you often and over and over and over again to places of choice. You're going to have to make a decision. Which way to go? Am I going to adhere to His Word or am I going to choose my reason or my own way? So He's speaking and I believe Peter's heart is being touched by this Word. Life is coming into Him even after working all night. It's reviving. It's refreshing. You know when the Word of God is going forth and the Spirit of God is anointing it, you really can be there all night long and go off on your day tomorrow. You know what's amazing is something begins to to cause us to dread something like that. Now listen, if it's in the flesh, it won't at all. But I'll tell you, the Word of God is not just a book. It's reviving. It's refreshing. When God's breathing life into it, it brings healing to the bones. He says He sent His Word to heal us. And so He's hearing this Word. And as He's hearing this Word, Jesus looks at Him and says, Push out into the deep and cast out your net. Now we know the story, but in the reality of what had just happened, it says they've been fishing all night. So think about you working the night shift. Anybody ever worked the night shift? Anybody ever worked the night shift? You know, you've made it through, and you're tired. You feel a little slow, a little groggy. You're kind of finishing things up, and you're usually a little grumpy, you know? You've been without sleep. You weren't made to be without sleep all night. They're cleaning things up, but they're hearing the Word. And now, Jesus brings him to a place of choice. He says, go out into the deep and cast out your net. And here's what he says. He, and listen, he starts off with, we've been working all night. But at your bidding. 
at your word, I will do it. Why? Listen, Jesus wasn't a fisherman. He wasn't a professional. Why would he say that? Because the word of God had gripped his heart. There was something that spoke to his heart. And he began to recognize this person as the Son of God. There was, there was an authority to him. Now listen, if I come into your house and you've got a plumbing problem, and I look down under there and I say, you know what? Probably if you just take that pipe off right there, you're going to look at me and not anybody's going to take me seriously. And that would be the right thing for you to do because I know nothing about plumbing. I'm not an authority on it. If I ever, if I ever start trying to mess around with your electricity, get me away from it. You know, because I have no authority. I've got, I'm not a professional in any of those things. I don't know anything about it. If Jesus, or if I was to say to Simon, "Hey, let's go fishing now," I can guarantee you, he would have said, "No." But at your word, if you speak it, I will do it, whether I understand it or not. And isn't it interesting how often the Lord takes us in ways that we don't understand and our reason can't figure out? I was just sharing with somebody today, we were talking and... uh, and I remember going to college. And during my first semester as I was crying out to the Lord, I remember being with thousands of people coming out of a gym. And as clearly as I'm talking to you right now, the Lord said, it's time for you to go. And I can't explain it to you, but it might as well have been. Nobody heard, I didn't see anybody else looking up. It might as well have been the heavens open up and God speak to me audibly. That's how clear it was to my heart. And all I knew was, yes, Lord. And you know what? Nobody agreed with me. But I knew it was the word of the Lord to me. And I'm going to tell you how many times, and what is the testimony of your life when you were walking through a place of indecision and you needed direction? And when did His word become a light to your path and a lamp to your feet? When did it shed light upon a decision you were to make? When did His Word become healing to your bones? When did it cause you to forgive that bitter place in your life that healing might come in? When was His Word a part of the redemption of your life where you were born again by the Word of God? And have we today delight in the Word? And have we forgotten what it is? It's not just, I like what Clayton just said, it was words of Jesus. I mean, it comes on that kind of authority. Do we take it as that, or have we been engulfed into a generation that has begun to question it and begun to kind of say, that's kind of archaic. It's not that we don't believe in God, but we want God on our own terms. Rebecca and I, as we begin to go through Proverbs with Baden early in the mornings, and we'll just she just reads a chapter, and then we all, like he says a verse that stood out to him, she says a verse. But one of the things we've talked about often, it says, it says, cease from your pursuit of wealth. To prize wisdom above gold and silver. Think about that. Does that fit into our lives and even into church today? Because let me tell you, if I can use this Scripture to convince y'all to pursue wealth and then remind y'all to support me, it benefits me. But I'm telling you this, the end result of every shepherd should be to cultivate in your heart the ability to hear God for yourself. Amen. Do you know what John said in 1 John chapter 2? We've mentioned this several times. He's teaching this as he's saying it. But he's saying, listen, don't you know that the anointing that abides within you will lead you into truth? You have no need for any man to teach you. Now think about that. He's teaching and he's sharing. He said, listen, guys, you don't need me. The 
the Holy Spirit will lead you into truth. <clears throat> the five-fold ministry was not set apart and called in order to be the mouthpiece of God for you. It all functions differently in their giftings, but their purpose is to cultivate in the body of Christ the ability to hear God for themselves and follow Him. And if every one of us in this room is rightly related to the head, which is Christ, every one of us will be functioning and doing the things naturally we're supposed to do. Do you know when, when I sit here and I, I, I look at this and I go, something immediately in my head begins to recognize these words are kind of blurring together. So something else in my head immediately begins to tell me, it, without even, I, I don't see all this stuff happening. Something's not telling me. All right, hand, reach for the glasses. Fingers, pick it up. Bring it to him. Put it on his eyes. But, you know, every part of me, because it's in right relationship to this head, begins to functioning without questioning any other part of me. And it begins to do what God called it to do. Do you know when you're rightly related to the head, I don't have to put a guilt trip on you to be a part of some mission program. When you're rightly related to the head, I don't have to manipulate you to support me because I've chosen to go to Russia to share something. I can trust that you'll hear God. And if God didn't tell you that, you don't need to do it. But so often, we've let ourselves find that place of you or need to be dependent upon me. And I'm not saying that's happening here, but I'm just saying you can hear God. But here's the next question. Faith is not going to grow in your heart until you learn to obey Him. Listen, what would have happened had Peter listened to the Word and listened to the teachings of Christ as he's sitting in that bed and he's going, ah, gosh. So I just, oh, oh, I just feel like water is just washing over me. And then he asked him to do something crazy. I want you to go out there and push out. You know what? I appreciate it. But you're not a professional. And I've already done this all night. And it's not happening today. So let's go on back in. How many times do we do that? And how many times have we missed the opportunity for the catch that's out there? Because it didn't seem reasonable. Or we began to question, you know what? I look at this in the Word, but what's crazy is I read this big book about this thick that tells me that's not exactly what that means. And God says, this Word has been tried and it has been found true. This Word will save you. This Word will renew your mind. This Word will heal your relationships. I told Sam before he went to school, that right there, if you apply it to your heart, you'll find favor with God and man. I'll tell you what, let's finish up in 1 Kings, that's 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 13. First Kings chapter 13. First Kings. First Kings. Chapter. Chapter 13. Now, this is a story of um, a prophet that was uh, sent by God to Bethel to, to bring, to speak God's judgment to a people. And God gave him clear instructions. He said, when you go, you speak my word. And when you leave, you go out a different way. And you don't stop and eat anything with anybody. You don't stop and stay in anybody's house. You go on and leave. It says, uh, verse 11, now an old... Okay, verse... Um, I'm trying to think where to start. Uh, verse 9, for it, is, for it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall eat no bread 
nor drink water, nor return by the way which you came. So the prophet came and he spoke this word, and then he's leaving. And he's telling that God told him not to stop and not to eat, not to do anything. Verse 10, so he went another way and did not return by the way which he came to Bethel. Now an old prophet was was in Bethel, and his sons came and told him of the deeds which the man of God had done that day in Bethel, and the words which he had spoken to the king. These also they related to their father. And their father said to him, Which way did he go? And he told them to saddle up the donkey, and he went out to meet him. Verse uh, 15, Then the old prophet is speaking to the young prophet. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I cannot return with you, nor go with you, nor will I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. For a command came to me, By the word of the Lord, you shall eat no bread, nor drink water there, and do not return by going the way which you came. And he said to him, I also am a prophet, like you. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. What does that next verse say? Next part of the verse. Now think about that. So here's the picture. There's a young prophet with whom God gave clear instruction. The word of the Lord came to him. Go and speak to Jeroboam and speak this word to him. And he says, after you've done that, I want you to leave. And I want you to not eat anything or drink anything or stay there. I want you to leave and go out a different way. So he does what God tells him to do and he begins to leave. And it says there's an old prophet in the land who begins to hear about what happened. And so he goes out to meet him. And he asks him about it. And the young prophet says, listen, God told me not to stay here, not to eat, not to go. And he says, yeah, but God has spoken to me. I think about that. I think about it also, you're a young man. This is the older prophet, the one who's seasoned and wise, the one who's been there for a while, the one who's has the experience. And the older prophet says, well, I heard a word from the Lord too. And he told me to tell you to come here and stay, to eat with me. But it says, all the while, he was lying to him. I mean, do you think that, can you believe that somebody would do that? And yet Jesus says in the last days there are going to be false prophets and false teachers that are going to come in the name of Jesus. And they're going to say, I I have the way. This is right. Listen to me. And he says, because of that, many are going to be led astray. And it goes on, it says this in in Matthew 24, it says, and because lawlessness has increased. You know what lawlessness is? Breaking God's law. What is God's law? To love Him with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself. So it says there are going to be those who are going to rise up and they're going to mislead many. How? By not telling the truth, by lying. It's okay to walk in lawlessness. You don't have to love your you don't have to love your wife. <laughs> Good word. Don't listen to him. Yeah, listen. And listen. I also have 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 sat with people that even though they haven't left each other's homes and divorced, they're not living together in heart. And the only reason they haven't is because they, well, then I probably, I've got, got a problem with this, but I've done it in my heart already. I'm not willing to die. I'm not willing to die. I'm not willing to come to the cross. I'm not willing to prefer somebody else. I'm not willing to forgive. I'm not willing. And there are those that are going to tell you it's okay. And so we see with this young prophet, verse 19. Listen, did he have a word from the Lord? And not only did he have a word from the Lord, he saw the affirmation of that word even as he shared it to Jeroboam. God was with him. But 
then as he got away, somebody else began to convince him. Somebody that was more respectable. Somebody that had the, the pedigree and the position and the experience began to tell him, I too have heard a word from the Lord. And it says he lied to him. Verse 19, So he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. Now it came about as they were sitting down at the table that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back, the old prophet. And he cried to the man of God who came from Judah and saying, Thus says the Lord, Because you have disobeyed the command of the Lord and have not observed the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, but have returned and eaten bread and drunk water in the place in which he said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water. Your body shall come to the grave of your fathers. It came about that he was eaten by a lion as he went on his way. Listen, my encouragement to you, and I took some different scriptures that I didn't share, or that I shared some different ones too at the apartment, but God's word has been tried. It says as in a furnace seven times. It says His word is faithful. It says His Word will not return without accomplishing the purpose He set it forth. In Galatians it says, whatever you sow to, you're going to reap. If you sow to the flesh, which means the wisdom of this flesh, the, 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 uh, the counsel of this world, you're going to reap what comes from it. It may all sound good, but if it's not based in truth, it's not, it's not sustainable. It's not going to keep you. Jesus tells the parable of the wise and the foolish. Both of them heard the word of God, but the foolish man decided to use other material to build with. And when the storm came, which it did, it blew the house down. But the wise man chose the material of God's truth to build his life upon. And it says, when the same storms came, it held that house. It kept it in the midst of the storm. And so what I want to challenge you to and, and, and encourage you toward, don't get away from spending time with the Word of the Lord. Amen. And don't believe the lie that it's not for you, that you can't understand it. Listen, praise the Lord for good teachers that lead us to love God, lead us to love from a pure heart, a good conscience, sincere faith. But I want you to know you can hear God and that this Bible was not made for the colleges and seminaries. I'm just telling you right now, it was made for you. Come as a child. Come as a child. And it was made not just for for you to understand because you can't. The Holy Spirit has been given to you to break it open for you. And let me tell you, it's a living word, which means as you begin to spend time with it, you'll come to those places where you need direction in your life. Now listen, I come to a place, and he says, it's time for you to go. God, I don't even know where. How do I know it's you? And the next thing I know, he takes me to Hebrews chapter 11. Abraham, when he was called, obeyed, and he went out to receive an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. I knew that word for that time was an affirmation that that I didn't have to have the answer, but I was to move forward. 